what made Magnus react that way in the game against Gugesh D? What was the position that Magnus blundered in? Rook C7, a very nice move by Gugesh getting the rook and it's still completely winning for Magnus. Here, the queen is almost trapped. That is the idea of rook C7. The knight is attacked, right? So Magnus can play knight G6, but what happens if knight D3? Is the queen trapped? Can you find how the black queen can get out of there? There is only one good move here and that is d4. So this was still possible for Magnus. Maybe this is why this is why he played rook e8. He didn't go knight g probably because of knight d3. He didn't want to get that position. He just played rook e8, which is a huge blunder. But it is not easy to see how this is a blunder. Gugesh in 10 seconds plays queen b6. Can you find out the nasty threats that Gugesh is making here? The more obvious threat is rook takes knight. And if rook takes, there is queen d8 and it's going to be mate. Right? So that is the main threat. But there is an even bigger threat here. And that is what got Magnus. Knight d3 would trap the queen in the center of the board. The black queen has nowhere to go. All the squares are covered when the knight comes to d3. Everything. The queen just gets trapped right in the middle of the board. So that is why Magnus loses a piece, the e7 knight. He moves the knight so that the queen has space to move. But then Gugesh just takes on e7 and he's now completely winning. Magnus cannot take because of mate on d8. So rook moves and here queen c7 comes. Threats on g7 and exchange of queens is almost forced. But queen e3 check. King h1 and here Magnus resigned. Magnus could have tried rook a1 but then there is a nice checkmate. I would let you try and find out. If rook a1, can you find out how white could have checkmated black? Because it's tough to defend this threat. You can't defend the rook and you can't take. But black's own king is going to get roasted. What can white do in this position to checkmate the king? I would let you solve it and if you find the solution, please post it in the comments. But Magnus resigned right after king h1. He did not even try rook a1 because he believed his opponent would just go for the, the meat on the king. So that is how Gugesh defeated Magnus Carlsen for the first time in his life. It was an online event, but still, it's a big moment. So he becomes the youngest player to have defeated the world champion. This is how the world champion uh, looked when he was playing Arjun Eregesi in the Ames Rapid. A little ghostly look. And then once Arjun got into a great position, Magnus just got upset. He just lost it. He could not believe that he had such a terrible position. And it completely lost. So let us see how that game went and how Arjun completely crushed Magnus in this game. F takes, F takes. And now comes Queen F2. Getting ready to jump in with Queen F7. Here it was required for Magnus to play rook h7. He goes rook b8, threatening mate on b1. It's very easy to, to play passively as white in these positions. Because there are different moves that stop the mate. For example, bishop b2 is a move that stops the mate. But it's too passive. I can just play first rook h7 and then ideas like a3 are coming. And knight b2 would immediately get hit with a3. And black just wins. What other options? Bishop d2, covering the b1 square, but not quite covering a3 and b2. So knight a3 is good, pawn a3 is good, bishop a3 is good. So it's easy for white to go wrong here, but after taking, staying rook b, queen f2, rook b8, Arjun plays queen f7, going in for the kill. Bishop e7, because if king d8, there was bishop takes pawn, defending b1, and rook can't take because queen take bishop. And bishop can't take because of queen f6. Fork. I mean, not exactly for king d7 is there, but the knight c5. Winning the queen. Queen has, I mean, king c8 allows queen takes rook. Sorry. King c8 allows queen takes rook and it's completely gone. So that is why after queen f7, Magnus played bishop e7. And now knight c5 check. Bishop is pinned. The king cannot go to c8 because then there is queen e6. And mate incoming on king d8 mate. So after knight c5, he has to go to d8. Now queen g6, defending the square. 
you have to have nerves of steel to play like this with just one knee thread which is taught by just the queen that too far away it can be blocked right but here there is no way for magnus to do anything about this defense knight takes e5 was played if pawn takes then magnus would just take with the bishop arjun takes on e6 king d7 and pawn takes taking the piece and if queen takes arjun could have exchanged queens here actually because he is up by a pawn arjun plays queen e4 he wants to win this game in the middle game itself you can you see the threats bishop takes knight is a threat if bishop takes queen takes back the pawn is pinned which is why this is not a free queen and the pawn is hanging as well but magnus can defend both by getting out of the pin to see things but then came queen f5 queen takes knight takes back pawn takes back was also fine but knight takes back is more active bishop c5 and bishop h6 notice that the knight can't really take on e5 because it's pinned he would lose the piece so he doesn't have to take he can just take on h6 and he did now a3 trying to get rook b to win getting some play but then bishop takes knight bishop takes back and now there is no rook b2 the h2 rook is covering it e6 the pawn rushes rook e8 rook e1 defending the pawn bishop d3 knight d4 check takes takes and rook b4 here arjun played a very good move rook to h3 not allowing rook takes d4 can you find out what happens if rook takes d4 there is rook d1 winning the piece so he played bishop e4 did magnus now there was a good move here for white can you find out a cute little move here for white the pawn is hanging you can of course take on a3 but there is also e7 the e6 pawn is hanging but rook can't take because of bishop f8 skewer and if rook can't take then the bishop f8 anyway goes and then the rook is stuck there and then the g and h pawns can run so that was one possibility arjun goes for rook a3 rook takes e6 and now bishop f4 another nice move allowing rook d4 you could have also defended it with bishop g7 but then rook g6 comes and you would anyway lose the g pawn which was still okay but he plays bishop f4 what is the idea rook takes pawn and here his idea is rook c1 c7 is hanging and here magnus should have played king b5 because if king back rook c7 anyway comes he played rook c4 which is immediate loss because now arjun can exchange of both pairs of rooks takes takes and rook a6 and this is where magnus realizes he is in deep trouble he is lost and arjun just brought his king over bishop f3 g5 c5 king c3 king d5 g6 the king went back but there's too many pass pawns bishop defends it and then h5 and now here carlson resigned because a4 a5 is coming and once he gets to a7 he will play h6 as well once the bishop moves away and that would be completely lost so that is how arjun won this game against the world champion for the first time in his life